Hi and welcome to Azure Data Shorts. I'm Vincent, I'm with the Azure Data Explorer group. Today we're going to focus on understanding extents. More specifically, we're going to learn what extents are, how they are created and managed by Azure Data Explorer, and how to use that knowledge to improve queries and ingestion. Let's dive right in. What is an extent? An extent in Azure Data Explorer is what is usually referred to as a shard in database literature. To understand a role that an extent plays in Azure Data Explorer, let's look at the deployment model. So here we have a cluster of six nodes, so six virtual machines, and a multitude of extents. And those extents are scaled out or distributed along those nodes. So each node is assigned an extent so it can respond to queries with those extents. So each extent represents a portion of data on the table. If we take a step back in terms of objects we know in Custo, we have the extent, multiple extents belongs to table, and the table belongs to database, and database belongs to a cluster. Characteristic of the extents is that they are immutable, and that's actually a, one of the biggest strengths of Azure Data Explorer as an analytic platform. Because the extents are immutable, it allows Data Explorer to do a lot of optimization. It doesn't need to have read or write locks on them. They are columnar, which means the data stores in column and compressed, and column format allows for better compression. And finally, they are indexed. As we mentioned, extents are typically assigned to nodes. Content of the extent can be cached. And finally, extents are aligned with time as data get ingested. So let's talk about the ingestion process and let's try to visualize that. Let's assume we already have a table with four extents and we start ingesting data and that can take multiple form. We can ingest from Event Hub, from Blob, inline ingestion. Whatever way we do, let's say we ingest a blob. To ingest a blob, gets compressed, indexed, and turned into an extent inside our table. Then we ingest another one. Then we ingest another one. So now we ingested three blobs, and the extents are kind of unbalanced because the blobs were not of the maximum size of an extent. And so we have three little extents and four big extents. So there's an asynchronous process happening in Azure Data Explorer, which is called merging, where, where Data Explorer will merge those extents together to optimize the size and optimize access. Let's quickly demonstrate what we just learned on a conceptual level. So I'll create a table. The table will be very simple. It's going to have two columns, an author column, and just an ID column. And I'll start ingesting data in that table. Here I'm in using the inline ingestion which is not recommended in prod. Since it's inserted a few records at a time, it's very inefficient as we'll see. So here I'm inserting Socrates. If I take a look at my table, I see that Socrates has been inserted. So if I look at the table, and I look at its extents, well, so it currently has one extent. I have the extent ID, it's in the database dev, table authors, and the max created on it will look later on. And I can see I have only one row, the minimum created. A couple of details, but we won't look into those. But if I do something similar, but this time I insert Aristotle, I have a new extent. If I look at my table, I have the two entries, and I have two extents, two very small extents, so a few bytes on. Just as an interesting detail, I can see the original size, the number of bytes for the extent. Only a few bytes for the content of the extent. But you can see the extent is actually bigger because it contains the index information, the statistics, and that type of thing. We're going to wait a little and see that the merging is happening. Merging can take a few minutes up to an hour, sometimes a bit longer if the, the cluster is busy. The process is asynchronous, and Data Explorer will perform the operation when it impacts the cluster at least. We'll be back when it's done. Now that the cooking is over, we can see that uh, our table has merged the extents. And we can see that because there's only one extent. For those who are keen observers, you notice that we have a different extent ID because extents are immutable. So it created a new extent on the same table. And we should see the extents a bit bigger and should have a 
row count of two. So we have we have served first and the merging. Now if we insert third record, but after Socrates and Aristotle, Plato was a teacher of Aristotle, so created a new extent. And now we see we have two extents, so the one that was merged first, two row counts, and the one we just created. And if we would wait again, it would get merged because they're extremely small and it's just one record. So this is merging in action. So I was to look at a very simple table. Now let's look at a bigger table. I'm gonna connect to a cluster with bigger tables. And the one I'm gonna choose is this table, which has 40 billion rows. So hopefully more than one or two extents. So if I do a show table, extents on it, I should see a few. So I have 1,700 records. So a couple of things to observe first. Uh, yeah, they are much uh, bigger. You can notice that they lead the same size. They all have one gigabyte. So you can tell that Azure Data Explorer in this case, in that situation tries to optimize all the extents of about one gigabyte in size, about 24 million records. Now let's talk about the consequences of what we've learned. So creating multiple small extents is inefficient for the reason that we've seen that they get merged. So basically we kind of ingest it twice. So as much as possible, we want to avoid that if we want to keep our ingesting process efficient. We want to ingest data in a way that they can blend to an extent of the proper size. And the most efficient for ingestion is between 100 megabytes and one gigabyte of uncompressed content. Is that a hard set rule? No, it's not. Of course, if we have plenty of compute, we might not care. And depending on how we ingest, might not be important. For instance, if I do a batch ingestion at three o'clock in the morning, and nobody is going to hit the cluster with any queries until seven o'clock in the morning. What do I care if some merge is happening? It doesn't matter. So it's really, if we do re near real time ingestion all the time, so we want to optimize that way. So that's something to keep in mind. So that's on the ingestion side. If we look at the querying side, what are the consequences of what we've learned? We've learned that data is distributed in extents. So a way to optimize our queries is to make sure that Data Explorer only has to open a few extents. And the number one rule to boost query efficiency is to filter by time. Because if we filter by time that is correlated to the time of ingestion, we're basically just going to look at the last couple of extents, for instance. Then we just open a few extents and then it's very fast. And that's why in Azure Data Explorer, we can do a query on a table that has billions of records. But if we filter for the last week, for instance, of events, the query will be extremely fast. It won't have to go through the entire table, we'll just go through the last pieces of the table. So that's something else to keep in mind. So I hope that this little tour in the extent mechanics was helpful and will help you to optimize your ingestion and queries. Please follow us on Twitter, blog, on YouTube. Uh, we're also present on the Stack Overflow. You can see the tags to look for. And until next time, 